Hey everyone, this is Paul from IOM, and I'm here to talk to you about the Star Wars comics that have been coming out from Marvel. Uh, they recently completed a big crossover, Vader Down, and I wanted to get on the mics and talk to you guys and kind of show you a brief summary of everything that's come before um, this week's uh, new release, uh, if you're watching this on the day this uh, video came out. Uh, January 20th, Star Wars number 15 comes out. It's the start of a brand new story arc. If you haven't been following these new in-continuity Star Wars comics, I thought this would just kind of be a good um, resource for you to get caught up, kind of take a, you know, a look at what's happened before, and uh, you know maybe decide for yourself if you want to pick up the storylines or not. I really recommend them. I think Star Wars is a great book, has had some great art and writing from... Uh, Jason Aaron and on the Darth Vader book from Kieran Gillen. But let's go ahead and start talking about Star Wars number one and, and what's been going on in those Star Wars books. And when I say Star Wars books, I'm referring to Star Wars and Darth Vader. Um, there are other titles that Marvel is releasing, but the, the two main ones I'm referring to are these two. And because the other titles are kind of different storylines, kind of set apart from what's going on in these books. As we start in Star Wars number one, uh, the first story arc is called Skywalker Strikes. And um, it starts with Princess Leia, Han Solo, and Luke Skywalker uh, leaving a covert mission against the Empire. Um, this is right after the destruction of the Death Star, the first Death Star, I should say. And so the Empire, uh, you know, is, is kind of reeling from the loss, and the Rebels are like, let's, let's go ahead and take the fight to them. And so uh, there's a covert mission on Simon One, which is one of the biggest weapons manufacturers or weapons factories for the Empire. And so uh, going undercover, the the rebels infiltrate it. And what they decide, uh, what they find out is that despite the fact that they thought this was a fully automated facility, they actually have slave workers working on the moon. So rather than planting their charges and just getting the heck out of there, uh, Luke goes to free the slaves, and unbeknownst to him, Darth Vader has arrived. And, you know, he brings the fight to Luke, and so we see kind of the first lightsaber battle between Luke and Darth Vader happen in this book. The fight is interrupted because Han and Leia take control of an at, -AT and Luke escapes um, with the rest of the rebels, leaving Vader behind. But Vader has kind of now seen that this is the boy who destroyed his first Death Star. Uh, you know, he has met him, and now he has um, a fascination with who is this kid. He feels that this kid is strong in the Force. As a result of this, Darth Vader takes a meeting with Jabba the Hutt and employs two bounty hunters. Um, there's a, a Wookiee bounty hunter and Boba Fett to track down who this boy is. Vader's on Tatooine at this time, and he's taken out some aggression on the you know, the Sand People, because as we know what happened with, uh, you know, in Episode 2. Elsewhere on Tatooine, a mysterious bounty hunter is looking for Han Solo. And you don't know why yet, but we're going to get into that in a minute. So Boba Fett goes to Tatooine because he knows the boy has a connection there. And him and Luke come across each other's paths at Obi-Wan's house, uh, Obi-Wan's hut in um, the desert, because Luke is there... Um, basically at the request of Obi-Wan's Force Ghost uh, to get Obi-Wan's diary, the, the journals of Obi-Wan. And so him and Boba Fett kind of get into this uh, this fight, and Luke manifests the Force, um, not necessarily for the first time, but he manifests it in a way he hasn't before by uh, taking this, this uh, container that's on a shelf and moving it with the Force and knocking Boba Fett out and escaping the fight. On another planet, Han and Leia are on the run from the Imperials, and they go in hiding. And while they're in hiding, of course, Han's putting the moves on Leia, and they're interrupted by this uh, laser fire from a spaceship that comes in, lands, and uh, the pilot introduces herself as Sena Solo, and she says she is the wife of Han Solo. You may be... Uh, you may have heard a little bit about this before because when they introduced this woman as Han's wife, it was all over the internet, tons of stories, that kind of thing. And um, that story continues to play out over the next couple of issues. Meanwhile, Luke discovers the journals of, of Ben Kenobi and sets about reading them. Back on the Death Star, Boba Fett reports in with what he's learned about this 
mysterious boy who destroyed the Death Star. And, you know, Vader basically just asks him, hey, what's, what is this kid's name? And, uh, and Boba Fett tells him his name is Skywalker. And so Vader has these flashbacks and realizes that uh, he has a son. And this is, you know, a, a kind of a, a brilliantly told moment. One of the, you know, probably one of the best moments in any of these books is the moment that Vader finds out he has a son. Because as we get into Empire Strikes Back, Vader already realizes that Luke is his son. And this is the moment where he finds that out. And so it's a really great moment in the book. Um, if you know, if you get a chance to read these books, I recommend picking them up, if nothing else, but for these moments. Now, in the pages of Darth Vader leading up to this moment, um, Due to his responsibility in the, you know, for losing the Death Star, Vader is kind of, he's kind of taken a, a hit in his uh, reputation with the Emperor. And so uh, there's a, a gentleman, Grand, Ad, Grand General Tag, has now been put in charge. Um, you know, kind of Vader has been given uh, a smack on the hand. But meanwhile, Vader is kind of pursuing his own interests, you know, following up on this rebel pilot. And, you know, Vader and Tag have this kind of um, hate hate relationship. There's no love between them. But to pursue his ends, Vader employs a rogue archaeologist, Dr. Afra. And together, they uh, put together, I shouldn't say put together, but kind of um, turn on these two droids, Triple Zero and BT-1. And these are torture droids. Uh, they, they are kind of the, the dark... C-3PO and R2-D2, and these two guys are awesome. Um, they are great original characters for these series. And, uh, you know, truly evil droids, um, you know, if that's such a thing, that just revel in, uh, in human torment. And so, you know, with Vader kind of working together with Dr. Aphra and Triple Zero, they, they have now uncovered this mysterious agent silo four um who's secretly working for the emperor and vader uncovers uh you know kind of working behind the emperor's back that this silo four has a, a secret facility where he is grooming vader's replacements um given that vader has you know screwed up one too many times you know, uh, the Emperor has kind of put about this uh, program where these these recruits are, are have come together, and uh, you know they are, they are not Jedi, they are not Sith. Um, I guess the closest equivalent would be that they are Inquisitors, but they're not referred to as such. And so, you know, the, the Emperor has has put together this this kind of strike squad, um, and Vader is uh, set about uh, set on them. As, as a test for them and he, he you know he, he pretty much whoops their asses but you know the the fight is 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 interrupted uh, so it's not like any of them really die meanwhile that wookie bounty hunter that we saw earlier his name is Crescenton, and he is um hired by Dr. Afra for something that we will see later on in the books. One of the things that you'll see throughout the Darth Vader book is that because of the Emperor's distrust of Vader um, and his disappointment in Vader, he kind of gives these little, he gives Vader babysitters. And so Vader is assigned a new babysitter, Inspector Thanoth, who, um, you know, the Emperor knows that Vader is up to something, but he doesn't know what. And so Thanoth is there to kind of keep an eye on Vader as well as to assist him. What Thanoth doesn't know is that Vader, working with um, Afra and uh, other bounty hunters, stole a stash of credits from an Imperial cruiser and made it look like an accident. Um, you know, he used the bounty hunters and they were able to take some of the money, but, you know, he, he's using this money to use these bounty hunters to find the rebel pilot. And so Afra, BT-1, and Triple Zero are on their mission to to find out more information about this rebel pilot. And what she uncovers is this guy called the Anti. He is an information dealer. And working with him, she uncovers that Senator Amidala had given birth to a son. Now, at this point in the book, um, it is not revealed to anyone that Vader had a daughter, which makes sense because he didn't realize that until Return of the Jedi. And so, you know, uh, right now, 
Vader just knows he has a son. But what Vader doesn't know is that Thanoth is kind of on his heels in tracking down Dr. Aphra and these stolen Imperial credits. He sets a trap for, trap for Dr. Aphra, and luckily Vader and him basically decide to let her go because she's small fries in the grand scheme of things, and what they're really trying to pursue are these stolen Imperial credits. So Aphra escapes... Um, and unbeknownst to Vader, he doesn't realize that he is being stalked by uh, Commander Carbon, who's one of the Emperor's new apprentices that we saw earlier. And he knows that Vader is now pursuing Luke Skywalker to the planet Vrogas Nas. Now before we get to Vrogas Nas, though, let's jump back to what was happening in the pages of Star Wars. In the pages of Star Wars, we had just met Sena Solo. And, you know, Luke had discovered the tr journals of Ben Kenobi. Now, reading the journals of Ben Kenobi, it, it doesn't reveal any real new information other than, you know, uh, Ben kind of kept an eye on Luke throughout his life, um, you know, kept him safe, and, and understood himself as the last of the Jedi Order. Uh, but, you know, he, he wanted to keep Luke safe in order to, you know, for the Jedi to one day come back. Meanwhile... Han and Leia and, um, you know, Sena Solo escape from the Imperials on, on the, the planet where they were being stalked. And Luke, using information from Ben's journal, goes to Narshada, which is a smuggler's moon. And what he is doing there is he's basically um, looking for information regarding Jedi artifacts so he can uncover... Uh, just more information about the Jedi and, uh, you know, and kind of get a better understanding of them. Uh, but unfortunately, he, is, you know, he reveals himself uh, with his lightsaber um, on the planet, and that planet is just a hive of scum and villainy. Um, and he is taken prisoner by Gracchus the Hutt. Mon Mothma, unfortunately, doesn't want to go to war with the Huts, and so she doesn't know what to do. So, but what happens is Chewbacca, who um, is back at the the rebel base, takes on the charge of saving Luke. Luke is kind of put into this uh, fight club, um, led by the the Hut on the on that planet, and the the kind of the game master there sets about training Luke and you Luke, and you kind of think he has taking a liking to Luke, or, you know, kind of a soft spot for Luke. Um, but you're going to find out more about him in a bit. Meanwhile, Chewbacca, on his way to Narshada to, to save Luke, gets uh, into a fight with, a, with another bounty hunter who is still pursuing Chewie and um, Han from the, the fact that we know Han owes, owes money to Jabba the Hutt. We're still between uh, Star Wars... A New Hope, and Empire Strikes Back. So Luke is put into this fighting ring with giant creatures like Congo the Disemboweler. Meanwhile, Han and Leia are kind of having a heart-to-heart, -heart where Han reveals that he never really married Sena Solo. Um, they, he pretended to marry her, but they had to make it look kind of real, almost to the fact that it was. Um, but it was all part of a scheme, or, um, you know, back when he was a smuggler. So... They get to Narsh. They they come across information that Luke is on Narshada. He's been taken captive. They know that Chewbacca is there to save him, and they save Chewbacca just in time from that bounty hunter. And Chewbacca kind of throws that bounty hunter off a roof with a thermal detonator, and he goes kablooey. Meanwhile, the game master reveals to Gracchus the Hut that he the whole time has been an Imperial uh, spy. Um, you know, he, he's he's an informant for the Empire. Han, Leia, and Chewbacca show up at the gaming arena to save Luke, and you might have seen the picture of all of them holding lightsabers. This is that scene because they have these lightsabers in the arena. Uh, in fact, Gracchus the Hutt has a, uh, a whole cache of Jedi artifacts, including um, Jedi holocrons um, and these lightsabers. Sena Staros um, reveals that that's her real name, and she's not really Han Solo's wife, like he said, and everything's happy hunky-dory. And this story wraps up with the Game Master revealing to the fact that he works for Darth Vader. 
And Darth Vader basically says, tell me everything that he learned about Luke Skywalker in their time on Narshada. And that leads us up to Vader down. At this point, Luke is still unaware that Vader is his father. And he is uh, headed to pursue this knowledge again on the Jedi. And so he goes to Vrogas Vas, which is a, a former Jedi, or has a former Jedi temple. Uh, but Vader finds out, like we showed earlier, that Luke is on Vrogas Vas. Vader comes out of uh, hyperspace, not realizing that there are a ton of rebels out there, and they're just on a training mission. They're not there. Wait, it's not a trap. Um, he just accidentally uh, comes across this fleet, and using the Force in a way we've not seen Vader do before in a TIE fighter, whoops, all their butts. Um, you know, he takes them out with, with no problem whatsoever, this entire fleet of rebel fighters. And what Luke does to stop the battle is he kind of goes kamikaze, on Vader. He crashes his X-Wing into Vader's plane, and they both go tumbling down towards Vrogas Foss, where Vader is now stranded-ish. You know, he, he you know, the, the rebels are there. They don't know that, he didn't know there was a rebel base there, and so they, they surround him, and, uh, you know, Vader is ready to, uh, to open up a can of, uh, kick butt on the rebels. Elsewhere on the planet where Luke has crashed, he is taken prisoner by Triple Zero, who's disguised himself as C-3PO, and Dr. Aphra. Once again, Chewbacca comes to the rescue of Luke, um, you know, taking, ripping off Triple Zero's arm. R2-D2 gets into a fight with BT-1, and Han Solo and Dr. Aphra kind of do, you know, battle from afar, shooting at each other. Luke gets a hold of his lightsaber, you know, stabs it through triple zero who's not dead i mean these are protocol he's a droid and you know he 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 comes out at the end the the rebels escape afra triple zero and bt1 meanwhile princess leia has confronted darth vader who's taken out a, a number of rebel soldiers and what he doesn't realize is that he you know because he's so in hot pursuit of luke skywalker he doesn't realize that she's led him into a trap elsewhere Luke and Han and Chewie are ambushed by that Wookiee bounty hunter again, Kersantan. And, you know, Han Solo believes that Kersantan's there for him, but what he finds out is he's not. He's there for Luke. And just in case things weren't bad enough and there weren't enough characters in the story, Commander Carbon is back to, to take down the Rebels and Vader because he wants it all. Kersantan and Chewbacca do battle. Of course, Chewbacca, you know, takes him out. But Luke is, you know, in the, in the middle of all this battle, he's communing with Ben Kenobi. And Ben basically tells him, you're not ready for this battle. You're not ready for what's coming. Um, you know, because at this point, Luke does not know that Vader is his father. And this has been like saying it, but not saying it, just saying you're not ready to know this. With the help of C-3PO, the rebels take down Kersantan. Darth Vader takes out Commander Carbon with the help of, help of Dr. Aphra. And at the end of the book, the Rebels have taken Dr. Aphra prisoner to get information out of her. And they escape Vrogas Vas with, you know, unfortunately, many Rebels left behind. And Darth Vader watches the Millennium Falcon, you know, kind of speed off into uh, the sunset. And that gets us up to today. Star Wars number 15 comes out this week from Marvel Comics on January 20th. I really recommend picking it up. I recommend picking all these titles up. Um, Star Wars, Darth Vader, Lando, all of the Star Wars books are really high quality. Great art, great writers. Uh, but hopefully this helps get you caught up if you're interested in checking out the title. Um, and uh, thank you guys again for watching. Check out ideologyofmadness.com for our weekly funny books comic book discussion podcast. Keep it tuned here on this YouTube channel for more Star Wars, Batman vs. Superman, toys, uh, theme parks, beer, any videos. If we geek about it, we speak about it.